Land grabbing threatens the livelihood and food supply of the indigenous population in many countries. Land is legally and illegally appropriated through purchase, lease and deprivation. The involved players frequently move within statutory grey zones between traditional land legislature and capitalist ownership structures. Zambia is one of the nations most strongly affected by land grabbing. The terrain and village vicinity was traditionally communal property and not for sale. The British colonial administration changed this rule almost 100 years ago. It declared the most profitable and fertile areas to be royal territory. As a result, the white establishment forced the exploitation of natural resources and the cultivation of agricultural products. After Zambia's independence in 1964, the first government nationalized the land. From that moment on, the president administered the terrain and land plots are transferred by each municipal commissioner. Local families are granted temporary land usage rights, but they do not receive property titles. Small farmers have been doing traditional field work with crop rotation and fallow land for generations. The mostly infertile soil is enriched with fire ash. The harvest provides for families as well as the village community. Furthermore, the farmers sell their products to intermediaries and at local markets. Nowadays, three quarters of the population live off farming. But the basis of existence have changed in the wake of neoliberal economic reforms in the 1980s. The government continues to convert communal property into land on lease. More than a third has become a commodity. A supervisory authority administers the transfer to the private sector. In 2006, the government enacted the Zambia Development Agency ZDA Act to foster economic growth and development by promoting trade and investment. The government is currently offering fertile arable land in all provinces, more than one million hectares to be leased for 99 years. Especially agricultural conglomerates have shown interest often backed by an opaque network of shareholders and investors. As a result, corporations, banks and hedge funds can profit from low leases, wages and environmental standards. Land grabbing is transforming the economic existence of small farmers. 
more and more families must make due with shrinking ownership or barren land. Others have already lost their land and are forced to work as day laborers, for the most part at large-scale industrial farms. Presently, two-thirds of the population live below the poverty line. Fertile regions are home to the farms of Agrivision Africa, Zambief and Amathion Agri, three corporations expanding aggressively in the food sector. Their primary products are corn, wheat, soy, palm oil and beef. Zambief was founded in 1994 and owns more than 100,000 hectares of land. The company distributes its products through an internal retail network. Since its incorporation as a small-scale startup business, Zambief has, through both organic growth and acquisitions, become one of Zambia's largest agribusinesses, with annual revenues of approximately $250 million and currently employs over 5,000 staff. Zambief was listed on the Lusaka Stock Exchange in 2003 and only carried out its first equity capital raise in 2008. The district of Mpongwe is home to a former colonial farm block. In 2011, Zambief purchased multiple agricultural enterprises from a corporation responsible for the displacement of the Mimbolo community. The inhabitants lost their homes as well as 4,000 hectares of cultivable land without any compensation. Paul and his family now live near their former property. So, the residents of Mimbolo have been fighting for the return to their communal land for more than 10 years. So, each day to carry Pacha Kurandati, Ero to Ade Sura Landi, Varisa to Evo Kurandati Nimpanga, Yamfumu. So, Apa to Aba, Muran to Asawa win a quiet court. Then in Omba. After the highly disputed verdict, the community was displaced for a second time, shortly before Zambief took over the land. As a result, most small farmers relocated to a shanty town. Without owning any arable land, they live in extreme poverty, right next to Zambief's secured farm compound. Some support for the company's expansion also came through German loans.
Willkommen bei der DEG, der Deutschen Investitions- und Entwicklungsgesellschaft. Wir gehören zur KfW, einer der führenden Banken Deutschlands. Seit 50 Jahren fördern wir unternehmerische Entwicklungszusammenarbeit in Entwicklungs- und Schwellenländern und tragen so dazu bei, Armut weltweit zu mindern. With the motto, DEG supports staple food production in Zambia, 20 million euros float into the cash box of the company. Uh, Corporations like Zambief, Agrivision and Amatheon represent a business model based on the concentration of ownership and on land speculation. They own enormous patches of land a majority of which remains uncultivated. Zambief is looking to expand further, attempting to expel small farmers from land which is traditionally passed on. The land allocation system is not transparent. Many are not aware that their land is officially no longer available to them. And in several cases, the terrain was leased for profit illegally, without the community's consent. The community of Ngamwa is surrounded by farms. The railway company Tazara built the houses next to the railroad tracks. Some of them are now owned by inhabitants, but it has been reported that Agrivision recently threatened to clear the settlement. The company claimed to have purchased the territory of the village. <laughs> Agrivision owns 18,000 hectares in Zambia, 4,000 in this growing region for soy and wheat. The corporation is now also claiming the small field belonging to the community. Poverty and wealth live directly side by side. Agrivision is part of the Agrivision Africa Investment Company, headquartered in the tax paradise of Mauritius. The investment company Zeder, the Norwegian Development Fund and the subsidiary of the World Bank, IFC, all own shares in Agrivision.
Yeah. AgriVision was a, a, a wonderful swing, and we take our hats off to that management team. It's been very, very difficult in Zambia, and they delivered a wonderful profit. We think the investment is, is well embedded, and we'll look, look forward at the next year or to, to see whether we can grow from that. Yeah. The conditions within the community are catastrophic. Only a single pump is available for more than 50 families. Drinking water has been contaminated by widespread use of pesticides. Residents are forced to travel long distances for medical care and schools. <laughs> The inhumane treatment by AgriVision also manifests itself in the work conditions and wages. Local casual laborers are not even paid minimum wage. Most employees live within the farm compound, complaining about restrictions in freedom of movement. Our team is also refused access. Investments from Germany also support this project. The ATIF Fund, which focuses on African agriculture, paid AgriVision 8 million euros. This fund is headquartered in Luxembourg and it is exempt from taxes. The main funders are the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ, the Credit Institute for Reconstruction, KFW, as well as Deutsche Bank. Stakeholders literally speak about tapping into the potential of the African agricultural sector for the benefit of the poor. The reality looks different. A German company is also interested in making investments, with half a billion euros slated to be moved into southern Africa. Welcome to Amatheon Agri. We are a European agribusiness and food company headquartered in Germany's capital, Berlin, operating in Africa which is one of the most promising and highly profitable markets in agriculture today.
Amathion has grown into Zambia's second largest meat producer, with animal husbandry and fodder production on 40,000 hectares of leased land. Two dams are currently under construction. They are supposed to ensure cultivation during dry season. Amathion is planning to buy up additional farms, thereby exacerbating an unjust land distribution. Amathion does not farm three quarters of its land, including slopes and forests not suitable for industrial cultivation. But despite the enormous fallow land, the corporation is prohibiting the use. Small farmers may not grow anything, workers may not build accommodations. <laughs> Yes, ni one point one valefos. Number one point one, a mao a mao as valevo on Batawa won't fit a valeva pera maoas. The number of employees is quite low due to the high degree of mechanization. According to Amathion, a total of one thousand jobs will be created on sixty thousand hectares an area slightly larger than Chicago or Vienna. Already today, most work as casual laborers. Many local small farmers and farm workers live in poverty. Lack of labor laws, low wages and landlessness translate into a dependency on a corporation looking to make millions in profit. Zambia and Germany have committed to ensuring the human right to staple foods. The documented instances violate this agreement. Human rights organizations criticize public and private financing of agricultural corporations and their market strategies. Thanks to takeovers and mergers, they control the entire value chain from production via processing to distribution. The products are intended for the wealthy middle and upper class. But land grabbing also translates into land speculation. Enormous unused terrains are owned by corporations as capital investments. Those suffering from this neo-colonial agricultural model are small farmers and a starving populace. They demand the end of land conflict and displacement. 
Not politics favoring large investors and shareholders, but politics enabling sovereignty of sustenation. This self-determination must include secured land rights and the support of local marketing channels.